I just upgraded the firmware in my Canon R6 from its factory shipped version of 1.00 to the newly released 1.1.1, which is supposed to address some of the overheating issues. So as I promised I would in my previous review of this camera, in this video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at the overheating with the new firmware. Just bear in mind that there are hundreds of possible combinations of frame rate, resolution, crop, internal or external recording, indoors or outdoors, ambient temperature, with or without battery grip, with or without a dummy battery, screen flipped out or flush with the camera, clip length, and how long the camera is powered off for between those clips, etc. So it's really not practical to cover every single scenario in one video. However, I found that the R6 with the new firmware gives surprisingly consistent recording and recovery times in different modes. So before I go over my tests and conclusions, I first want to highlight a few important things that I discovered. One, it doesn't seem to matter whether you're in crop mode or full frame. The overheating results for me were the same time and time again. So from this point on in this video, I won't be talking about the crop mode, except to say two, you can't record 1080p at 100 or 120 frames per second in crop mode anyway. The high frame rate option is disabled in that mode. Unfortunately, what that also means is that the high frame rate mode is also disabled when you attach EFS lenses. Three, in 4K, both 25 and 50 frame per second modes gave me recording and recovery times that were within a couple of minutes of each other at every point. And four, if you have the battery grip, as I do, it makes no difference to the recording or recovery periods. So please don't buy it thinking it will help in that regard. Okay, so here's how I tested the camera. I recorded indoors with an ambient temperature of 24 degrees C or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I recorded internally to the SD card. The camera was being powered by a single Canon LP E6 NH battery inside the battery grip and I left the screen flipped out to the side. I started the camera up in movie mode with 4K 50 frames per second selected. And although it initially showed me I had 29 minutes and 59 seconds of recording time, by the time I'd formatted the memory card, thought about what I was doing, framed the shot, set the exposure, etc., I only had 25 minutes remaining. So I lost five minutes without recording a single thing. I left the camera in 4K 50 frames per second and started recording continuously. At roughly halfway through the recording, I felt around the camera and noticed that the area directly behind the sensor where the screen sits when it's flush with the body started to feel very warm. At just past the 25 minute mark, sure enough, the overheating indicator popped up. I stopped it and the camera showed only two more minutes of recording in 4K were available. Now, I know a lot of people want to know if you can still record in 1080p without any heat restrictions at any frame rate once it's reached this point. So without turning the camera off, I immediately switched over to 1080p, enabled high frame rate mode, and the overheating indicator disappeared. I started a new continuous recording, and the camera stopped at seven minutes and 29 seconds in, but not because it had overheated, but because in real time, that clip would exceed 29 minutes and 59 seconds, which is all the camera can continuously record for in any mode. I found I could just press record again immediately afterwards and get another clip of the same length and keep doing that over and over again. So this camera doesn't seem to have any heat related time recording limits in 1080p. However, as soon as I switched back to any of the 4K modes, the camera's overheating indicator started flashing again. With only one minute recording time available in 4K 50 frames per second and two minutes in 4K 25 frames per second. So now I wanted to see what the recovery time was like. I left it in 4K 25 frames per second mode and turned it off, then immediately back on. And nothing changed. Still only two minutes of recording were possible. So I turned it off again, this time for about one minute. And it recovered to allow a total of four minutes recording. 
which is quite reasonable, I think. Off again for one minute more. So a total of two minutes recovery time. And by this point, I'd regained a total of five minutes recording time. Off again for another minute. But this time, no improvement. Still five minutes of recording available. So I turned it off for a further two minutes, making a total of five. And this time it jumps from five to 10 minutes of recording time left. At this point, I'm starting to believe that the camera would make a great B-roll camera for most people. So off it went for roughly a further five more minutes. Still showing 10 minutes of recording time left. Off again, this time for about another 10 minutes. So getting towards 20 in total. And I deliberately didn't hit a precise 20 minute interval to hopefully show that the camera isn't just making decisions based on obvious time checkpoints. And sure enough, at this point, it had now regained 20 minutes of recording time. So off again for another four or five minutes. So almost half an hour of total recovery time but with no change to the amount of recording time available. Next, I turned it off for around 10 more minutes. And before turning it back on, I felt the back of the camera, which was definitely now cool to the touch. I therefore hoped it might have fully recovered by now, and not quite. We now have 25 minutes of recording time available after a bit less than 40 minutes total recovery. Regaining those last five minutes of recording time seems to be the biggest challenge. After another 10 minutes of recovery, we're still at 25. Finally, after just under one hour of total recovery time, we're back to a full 30 minutes of available recording time. The results from this test for me show a significant improvement over firmware 1.0, which I found took a lot longer to recover just 10 minutes of recording time and about two hours to fully recover. So the new firmware is a massive improvement. In my opinion, at least, it makes the Canon R6 a solid B-roll camera where you're mostly gathering a few supplementary clips a few seconds at a time. And even if you forget to turn it off between clips and it overheats, you only have to wait a couple of minutes to regain five more minutes of recording. Now, with all of that said, I didn't let the camera overheat to the point where you have zero minutes of recording left or to the point where it shuts itself down. And judging by how warm the back of the camera got in my test, I wouldn't recommend letting that happen and I'd say that the recording limits Canon have imposed are not fake as some have suggested. I believe you may get longer recording times outdoors in a cool breeze, especially if that breeze is blowing onto the port side of the camera, but I've yet to test that for myself. If you'd like to see more overheating tests with this camera, or you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments. If you'd like to watch other film and sound production related videos, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.